Subprocesses are types of activity. In this video, we will describe their diversity. There are several types of subprocesses in addition to the classic subprocesses loop subprocesses, multi instance subprocesses, ad hoc subprocesses, transactions, compensation, and event subprocesses. The first one we will talk about is the loop subprocess, represented by a cyclic arrow pictogram. These are repeating as long as the condition that allows the loop is true. In the following example, applications are considered as long as the offer is open. Indeed, regardless of the number of applications, they will all be examined one after the other. multi intent subprocesses are divided into two categories. Sequential instances, which are represented by the vertical lines pictogram, and the parallel instances, represented by the horizontal lines pictogram. Sequential instances will repeat one after the other as many times as specified, while parallel instances will run simultaneously. In the case of a parallel instance, this is a perfect example of the situation. At the arrival of a new cargo ship, Several cranes can simultaneously unload the cargo from its containers, the subprocess being standardized and each crane repeats the same activities. In this example, with a sequential instance, as soon as boarding is opened, the passengers get on board. Here, the number of iterations is known and determined in advance, the number of passengers expected being equal to the number of passengers registered for the flight. Ad hoc subprocesses, identifiable by the tilde piltogram, necessarily contain a set of tasks but no beginning and end events. In fact, they are used to specify that tasks can be performed without a predefined sequence. In addition, an activity can be assigned or executed a desired number of times. For this example, the housework process includes a set of tasks. Here, cleaning the bathroom polishing the living room, and vacuuming can be done as many times as needed, and each one is independent. On the other hand, it is possible to change the subprocess and make the polishing of the living room dependent on the vacuuming. In this case, the activities are linked up. Event subprocesses. This type of subprocess is necessarily included in a process they are callable at any time and triggered by an event as long as the process is running. An event-driven subprocess has its own sequence of execution. In this example, our process handles customer complaints. The event subprocess activates itself every 24 hours. At its trigger, a token comes on the timer event and follows the process on the activity of sending emails until its end event. Compensation is a category applicable to both activities and subprocesses. However, we will use a subprocess to illustrate the case. A compensation is recognizable by the rewind pictogram. This feature is used to indicate that the activity or subprocess implements the necessary operations to return the object to its original state. This category of subprocesses and activity is triggered by a border event. For this example, using the compensation ensures that if there's a problem when booking, the booked content becomes available again. We will now go into more detail on these mechanics with the transactions. Transactions can be identified by the double thin contour. They are subprocesses that must be executed successfully or returned to the initial state if at least one of its activities fails. In this example, we use a transaction for the first stage of our recruitment process. Upon receipt of an application, we enter into a transaction. The first activity is the creation of a profile on the intranet, for which compensation is provided. The second and the third ones have no compensation. In case any of the information proves to be false, an error is generated. The transaction ends 
and the compensation allows the return to the initial state of the first activity. When the transaction is validated, the application is accepted.